All right, welcome to part four of my Ableton tutorial series. My name is Isaac Rovell, and my website is seattleaudiophile.com. This is part four. It's kind of a continuation of the of the last uh, of the last tutorial I did, which was an intro to MIDI. We're going to cover some more about the clip view and try to make a drum beat in this one. So get back into Ableton. I did a little bit of work. Uh, the pro the the plugin that I'm going to be using is Impulse. And you can find that in Ableton. If you go to the drop down for instruments, you'll find Impulse. And in order to get in, to start working with Impulse, you can just click and drag into any empty space in the session view. And there it is. Delete. Or if you're in the arrangement view, you can do the same thing. Click, drag into the arrangement view, drop down. There's Impulse. And delete. Just don't care. Uh, go back to session view, aka mixer view as I like to call it. And uh, I've already got some impulse set up here. And uh, I got some samples in here. There's a kick. Oh, arm. i got to remember to arm it. Always remember to arm it. Kick, snare, hat. And uh, that is a sample that I grabbed of another snare. And we'll get into that in a second. So um, the way that impulse works is that you get eight slots. Each of these are a sample, can be a sample, and you can go in and control each sample individually by clicking on the sample and adjusting the volume here. Click and hold up to increase, drag down to, to decrease the volume, or this is overall volume. But it, basically you can throw any kind of audio file or sample into these and it'll play as uh, part of your drum set. So what I actually did, I have a, I have a a little folder set aside over here and these are my samples. I can go in into the browser up here and change where my where this uh, this little folder goes to but I want it to be in my samples. Wait, let's go back. Ah, don't do that. Okay, so I'm going back to my samples and I can hear my computer going a little getting a little upset with me right now but that's too bad. So okay I have like a big pack of samples. These are uh, in my drum folder. I've got I've got it divided into different pieces. Uh, it's getting really cranky. There's my kick, cymbals, loops, percussion, all sorts of various toms, various drum things that I can click and drag into here. And let's go ahead and grab a kick. Oh, that is a bass. I'm using my arrow keys right now, moving down, and you can see down here, it's actually playing the samples as I'm going through them. Number 14, click, click. That sounds pretty good. Let's say I want kick 14. I'm going to just click and drag it down here in the impulse, and now the corresponding letter on the keyboard or on your, uh, if it's on your MIDI controller, it should just default to uh, C, middle C. Uh, in this case, it's my G, my G key on my keyboard because I'm using my keyboard as my MIDI controller, as I covered in the last tutorial. Uh, and now it's activating whenever I hit G. So I have hi-hat, snare, and kick. If I wanted to make a quick little drum beat and make sure this is activated, I'm using D, S, D, S, and A. So it'd be like D, S, A, B, kick. There, I'm, I can make a drum beat. In order for you to record your drum beat, you're gonna go up here to the clips. These are all of your clip views. Double click on a clip and let's say I wanna get started here. Let's break this up. I wanna break up my clip view into a little bit more pieces than this because this is one and two and three and four and, and then it goes right back. I wanna, I, as a drummer, I like to think in four, four, so one E and. Uh, and I can right click on here. You got it in uh, 116. Let's divide it into 32. And now the grid has become a little bit more complex. We got smaller pieces here. I go up here. I'm going to set my tempo. Uh, let's turn it down to 120. It's just up a little wrong. And make sure that this is activated. And when I hit play, I can now hear my, uh, my metronome going. So let's start it trying to make a beat. I'm gonna just do the hi hat first. Hi hat, which is D. Now I'm not very precise with it, and most I'm gonna just go ahead and blame that on my keyboard because I can, because I'm the boss right now. 
but it's not really uh, a lot lining up very well. If I do Apple U, uh, Apple, uh, here we go. Control A, Apple U, there. And now everything should be kind of lined up to the grid. Remember that is quantized, I covered that in the last one. But it's all imprecise. So I'm gonna go in here, grab this, and oh, click off. Make sure that you're clicking on just the one that you want. Click and drag. And there, I've aligned my grid a little bit more. This guy needs to come in a little bit. I don't need this, so I'm just gonna double click it. And I'm just gonna make sure that this one is lined up with the side there. Oh, we got another one that's out of sync here. I hit spacebar to hit play. And I'm still, as long as I'm collected, clicked up here in the, the impulse, in this particular clip, then my impulse is going to know which what, what I'm trying to record over. Now let's try to add some kick, which is A. And some snare. Again, I'm not very precise right now. It actually works a lot better when I'm using my... Uh, uh, I'm going to say I'm just making excuses, but it works a lot better when I'm using my MIDI controller. I'm going to go ahead, click off, make sure that these guys are lined up to where I want them to be. And... can even shorten them, although it doesn't really make much of a difference when you're using impulse, as long as you trick, because your, your fingers are just triggers. And just like in the arrangement view, if you if you get up here, you see my hand turns into an hourglass. I can click and drag down to zoom in, click and drag up to zoom out. If I want to make it longer, I can click and click over here into length and drag up, and there it's doubled in length. We don't really want to do that though. I'm gonna go back down to one. There, I've made my first beat. Now I can double click. If I want, I can even do that record thing that we that we covered in the other one. Just kind of keep going around until I make a loop that I like, select it, and then uh, uh, just pick the one I want, but or pick the sections that I want to loop. But I'm not going to do that in this tutorial. I'm just going to go ahead and make another one. So I just go down to the second clip, hit play, tick tick. I don't like what I did there, so I'm just going to hit Control Z three times. Every every time you hit Control Z or Apple Z in my case, it's going to back up to one cycle before. What that means is as it goes through, as as the uh, as the playhead down here travels across one time, it'll rec do one record. Hitting Control Z gets rid of one cycle through. Uh, let me let me show you again. I'm going to hit space bar. Okay, I totally screwed that up. Now I tried to play, tried to fix it by playing again. When I hit Control Z, it just fixes my the the thing that I did where I tried to fix it. I hit Control Z again, and it backs up one more cycle. So you can go ahead and make drum beats like that. You can also use Sampler if you have a huge, uh, huge MIDI keyboard. Sampler might be a better way to go if you really have that many pieces of your drum set. But uh, that's the basics of making a uh, a drum beat. Also, if you want to, uh, let's say I want to play over my my original drum beat, which is this. I'm so good at the drums. I can go ahead and grab one of my VST plugins. This is my plugin folder. There's Chip32, which is my 8-bit Nintendo sound maker. Click, drag into some random area, and my keyboard. There, I've got another instrument to play with. I'm just going to click and drag this out of the way. So you can see I'm going to hit play on impulse and then click on select chip 32, which is free by the way. You should be able to find it for Max. On, a, on my PC I use Triforce. And then down here, make sure that in, uh, chip 32 is the one that's armed. I'm going to double click up here. This will be my, my clip. Hit play. Make sure that the playhead has started going. A little imprecise there. I'm going to click, control A, Apple U. 
everything is quantized now. Let's make some smaller grid. I'm just going to double click in here and make this wacky. Maybe it doesn't make a lot of sense, but and then I can go into my chip, alter the sound a little bit. There, I've made a little bit of a drum loop. That's just using my laptop and a set of headphones. Uh, the next tutorial will cover a little bit more MIDI, uh, but that should be the basics to get you started with making your own loops and your own songs. Thanks.